All right, I've been thinking about this a lot lately, especially through COVID and all the uncertainty that we've been through collectively over the past 12 months. You know, being a photographer is not just about taking pictures. If you are looking for a career in photography, it's also about marketing yourself as a photographer. And you may have noticed along the way that it's not always the best photographers who end up with the coolest jobs or those dream clients that you wanna work with. It's the ones that are able to most successfully market themselves in a way that attracts new viewers and customers. And this can be frustrating, especially if you're a competitive guy like myself, when you're looking at others in the industry. But I wanted to make this video to hopefully give you guys some tips, some things that I've learned along the way to help you market yourself as a photographer in 2021. <music> Before we get into this, just a quick little disclaimer. I am by no means the authority on marketing when it comes to photography. What you're gonna see here has worked for me in my specific journey along the way. So just keep that in mind and take what you'll see in this video and make sure you tailor it and apply it to your own unique skill set and your own unique career path as a photographer, all right? So here's the deal. I'm a visual guy. When I think about marketing for photography, I think about it in terms of a flow chart. And this flow chart kind of takes the form of a web. And what you'll notice here is that marketing isn't singular. In other words, it's not just one thing you have to do to promote yourself. It's this complicated web of different prongs and layers that all come together to make your business whole. So to simplify things, let's break this down into two categories, promo and development. And to start, let's jump in with promo. All right, obviously everything starts at the top with photography. That's your actual skill set as a photographer, your hard technical skills and your ability with cameras, lenses, and lighting. Everything else that you do to promote yourself will stem naturally from that. But obviously you have to start with the craft and getting really good at the craft before you can get into any of this other marketing. Once you feel like you've got that down and you're at a point where you're happy with your style as a photographer, it's time to put together a portfolio website. Now I've got a couple other videos up on this channel that you can check out that'll go through exactly how to put together a portfolio and give you some really nice tips. But on a high level, just to review here, your portfolio site should be a concise review of your best, and I mean only your best work for people to look through. If you were to introduce somebody to a band, say the Beatles, you'd say, go listen to their greatest hits album and you'll get a sense of what they're all about. So think of your website as your greatest hits album. It is something that's going to show the highlights of your career and also is going to change and continue to evolve as you continue to grow as a photographer. All right, so the website is an obvious one. I think most of you guys probably think about that from the start, but here's something that a lot of photographers don't do or choose to forego. You really wanna consider making a blog, and the blog is a running series of posts that you can update with recent work that you've been shooting. Now, there's a couple of reasons for making a blog. First, it's really a great way to track your progress and growth as a photographer. I started my blog all the way back in 2010, and now, 10 or 11 years later, it's become this living, breathing diary of basically everything I've shot in my entire career, and that's pretty cool to be able to look back on. And the second reason here is that when you make new work, this is a great platform to showcase just that project or just that shoot you did, rather than having to drive people back to your entire website. So consistently updating and maintaining a blog is a great record to keep track of all your work, but also a great way to show new work to new clients and people that you wanna reach out to. Now, finally, it's all about getting eyeballs on your work, and the best way to do that is through social media. You have to take advantage of these free services to promote your work and get it in front of people that otherwise wouldn't be able to connect with you or you wouldn't be able to connect with. Now for me, my go-tos are Instagram and Twitter. That's just what I like best and what works for me best. But you can also do great stuff on TikTok, Facebook, Snapchat, etc. whatever you choose. You wanna post your work at a consistent and regular cadence. And that's how you get your work out there and start to build a following. But the key here is not just building a following, but also linking. Use your social media channels to link back to your portfolio. So real time example, you went out and shot a baseball game. You get back, you edit your photos, you post your favorites to your Instagram feed. On your Instagram, you should link back to your blog post with more photos from that game. 
then on the blog post, you can link back to your website, which gets people back to your full portfolio. And boom, you've just locked in a new customer or a new viewer. So the website, the blog, and social media, three different platforms that each have their own unique purpose, but that also come together to build and promote your brand as a whole. So they're three different entities, but they all coexist to help drive eyeballs to your work and build a following. All right, stick with me, we're halfway there. So everything we just talked about is great for building your brand and promoting your work, but it kind of means nothing if you're not taking the active steps that you need to also get that brand in front of the right people who need to see it. So let me let you guys in on a little bit of insight into our world. Any great photographer whose work you admire, whose work you love, I guarantee you they didn't just get that dream job working in sports or wires or newspapers or working with those dream clients just because they posted their work online. Instead, they, they took a proactive, deliberate approach to networking and outreach, and that's what's gotten them into the hands and eyeballs of the people who needed to see it in order to get those jobs. So let's break this down. One of the best ways to go about proactively outreaching and marketing is through targeted promos. These can either come in the form of a physical promo on a piece of paper, old school style, or in the form of an email blast or newsletter. So basically, in addition to casting a wide net by posting all your work on social media, you're also developing a specific list of industry professionals that you want to target with this specific work that you want to show. So what I'd suggest here is doing your research and building out a contact list of clients or professionals, photo editors that you would ideally like to be working with. Then once you've got that list, you can use services like MailChimp to periodically send out promos to that select group of people once you've got new work to show. This is a great way to stay fresh in someone's mind and also an effective yet professional reminder that you're out there doing great work. Now, believe it or not, even in this digital age, old school networking is still super important and in fact, more important than ever. Now, one of the things that I was able to do really well when I came up in my career was reaching out to people whose work I admired and who I had questions for and wanted to connect with. So the more photographers, photo editors, directors, creative directors, executives that you can reach out to and actually make meaningful connections with, the better off you're going to be in starting to develop a network for yourself and creating those inroads to the places that you wanna be working at. Once you start having these conversations, you'll gain a lot of insight on your work. You'll gain a lot of knowledge on how the industry works. And it's just a great way to build that web of connections. You should be using resources like LinkedIn, which is a great resource to research key players in any given photography industry. And although it may seem daunting or scary, my point of view is a cold call or email is always a great first step. As long as it's done in a professional way, you'll be surprised at how willing most people are to actually help out. That's what happened for me and it's worked out pretty well so far. So begin to develop that network and you'll find that things will naturally organically just start happening for you. Now, finally, it's important to also realize you are not in this alone. Every photographer throughout the country is trying to do the exact same thing that you are trying to do. And there are groups that are built to actually help you out in getting this done. And one of the best things to look at is a photography advocacy group. Photography advocacy organizations are great ways to ingrain yourself into the photography community. And these organizations are set up to provide a voice and support and financial backing to photographers of all types. A few examples of these are the National Press Photographers Association, the NPPA, the American Society of Media Photographers, and the American Photographic Artist, APA. Most of these are national organizations, but also almost all of these have local chapters as well that host events, run contests, and offer other ways to get involved. You'll find that these are great places to bounce ideas off of, align with people who do similar work, and seek mentorship if that's what you're after. Okay, that's a lot, right? Well, it definitely is a lot, and that's the point here. Marketing yourself is a lot of work, especially now it's kind of become to the point where it's like a full-time job. So if you're just starting out in photography, this is not meant to scare you away, but it is just to make you realize that marketing is super important and it takes a real commitment of time, energy, resources, money, all of the above to make it happen. So let's just recap this to make it all very clear. Step number one, you have to be a good photographer and that takes time and that's its own separate project. 
Once you're there and you feel good about your work, there are two main pillars of marketing, promo and development. Under promo, you should have a great website, a consistent blog with recent work, and active social media channels to post your work. All three of these act separately, but also drive traffic and eyeballs to each other through linking and cross promotion. Then under the development category, you wanna actively seek out new clients, jobs, and connections. This comes in the form of either email or print promos, old school networking, and memberships to shared photo communities. And just like promo, they're all individually important, but also all work together in a symbiotic relationship. Now, if you go full speed ahead with all this stuff on top of making really great work, I am extremely confident that you guys will land that dream job or land those dream clients that you're looking for. So hopefully this video was helpful, but if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section down below. I'm happy to workshop any of this stuff with you. If you liked the video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and also do subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the support as always, and I'll see you with the next one. But in the meantime, We've got a lot of work to do. Let's get after it.